Movie o'clock, bozos. It's going to be Talk to Me. Let's review it. Brunch. Talk to Me from Danny and Michael Philippou in their feature directorial debut is a supernatural horror film centered on a group of Australian teenagers who use an embalmed hand to give their bodies to spirits. When the party trick goes too far, Mia must fight for the truth, while Riley must fight for his life. As of this recording, it has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Talk to me has a runtime of one hour and 35 minutes. I didn't sneak this into the synopsis, but this film is distributed by A24. I don't know what your experience was with it, but I feel bad for this movie because I think that this is a fine gourmet level Blumhouse type of thing that got overhyped by certain people I follow on social media. And that's not the movie's fault. Um, yeah, like I, I definitely agree that like the movie didn't do anything wrong. And it's a classic case of a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes does not mean that this movie is a 95 out of 100 do I, I am I after seeing it? Am I surprised that it's a ninety five percent out of a hundred on Rotten Tomatoes? Not really, because it's a good movie and it does a lot of things well. But that attached to also the hype that it's getting from certain people and like, oh, this is like the best directorial debut since uh, Barbarian, since Barbarian. Right. Uh, that kind of sets the bar extremely high. And I don't think that the movie meets it, but it is a good movie. Yeah, I forget who tweeted that, uh, making the comparison to Barbarian, uh, just as far as it being a great directorial debut. And with all due respect to the the Philippus, Zach Kreger should be offended by that. To be it, like Barbarian, I thought was an incredible movie, like a great. I think. Like crossover, whether you like yeah, horror I agree. or not, really, like really I think great Barbarian movie. was like a ninety-five out of a hundred. Right. <laughs> yes. right. I, I think that uh, I wanted it nominated for best picture. Yeah. I uh, was disappointed that it wasn't, but I also like wouldn't. I I think that the directorial debut aspect of the conversation is about like secretly about how cool of a story is. Cause I don't know if you read up on the directors, no, but like they worked behind the camera for a long time. Uh, they were YouTubers. They made short oh, films that, on YouTube yeah. and then like got a chance. Like they, they got the ball in their hands and they did this well with it. And so I think that's a very, very cool part. That being said, I don't think that this movie fucking reinvents any sort of wheel. Exactly. It just does a lot of things well. It looks good. It's scary. I thought the performances were great. Uh, it's jump scares don't feel it, cheap. They're earned. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. all very earned and make sense. And if there's any point where you say, Jesus, it's to yourself for not knowing that that was coming. It's a good, scary movie. I thought that the lead, uh, Sophie Wilde as Mia was awesome, but I thought that everybody was good. Everybody I, was really I thought good. the group of teenagers, who's the kid? Uh, there aren't pictures attached to the... I, I think it's uh, Max, kid with the weird face. No offense to me. That was super mean to that actor. <laughs> but just uh, he has a lot of character yeah. in his face. Yeah. I thought he was great. I thought the kid who brings the hand mm -hmm. was good. They're I, all good. Its yeah. opening sequence was very, very uh, good to draw you in. But for a movie about... A hand. This was not as gripping as I wanted hey, it to be. Hey, I see what you, know? you did there. Yeah, like there were points where it just no. kind of felt like it was leaning into. It's a supernatural film. Trust us. Well, I no, I mean, like I don't, I didn't get that feeling from it. I was more, I guess, waiting for like, what's when's the crazy shit? Like, when is the crazy shit happening? Like, when is this going to sort of blow my mind? And it never does because it it's it really is like a movie that you've seen before a horror movie that you've seen before but it's just like it's more well done you know like it, it almost feels like x in that way where x is like a slasher and it's just a really well done slasher and there's like a lot of care put into it the performances are really good um but like you've seen that before you know what i compare it to it's a better version of truth or dare yeah, you called it a gourmet Blumhouse movie, and like I've been using gourmet a lot to say <laughs> yeah. better version of something that's good. Yeah, you said Truth that. Because Truth or Dare was fine. Yeah, and like uh, 
I don't. I think that that's like a little bit disrespectful. Like it's an A twenty four take if on a Blumhouse a, if movie. If you're a talk to me head and you say and you hear me say this is gourmet, uh, truth or dare, you're gonna be like, fuck off. Yeah, that's right. Super mean, but it's it's an it's an A twenty four version of a Blumhouse movie. Yeah, but there is. I feel like there's been some of those where you're like, is this A twenty four or Blumhouse? Which as somebody who likes A24 and Blumhouse movies both a lot, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I think that Blumhouse or uh, A24 heads would be offended I, by I think it. that if you go into Talk to Me expecting it to be like a hereditary or Midsommar yeah. level, like unsettling horror movie, you're probably going to be a little bit di- disappointed because I don't think it has at, as much under the surface and under the hood as those movies do. But... This is still a like I'm not a horror guy. You're not a horror guy. I thought that this was a very good horror movie. I got to say uh the person who gets it worst in this movie and people die in this movie, but the person who gets it worst is the boyfriend of uh the I guess co-lead Sue's boyfriend. This character only exists for them to be like, this guy doesn't kiss anyone. What's he even doing here? Yeah, sure, we'll bring him to the party, but I'll tell you what's going to happen when we walk in. They're going to say, why is he at the party? This guy's lame. And every scene he's in, it just all and it does is just bang you over the head with, this guy don't do nothing interesting. I don't know if I would say that he gets it the worst, but he is definitely made out to be Riley like a wet a blanket time. yeah I'd so. say the, the, the character of riley doesn't do amazing yes this movie. uh also mia definitely a wet Mia's dad the, the boyfriend is a wet blanket i mean it's it's a uh, like I, don't th- I think he's a he, he's comfortable in his skin she he shows up to the house and uh the mother is like do you have alcohol in your car and he's like of course not i don't drink i'm like king <laughs> and he gets his toes sucked and he's not into it he's He's yeah. a bit of a kink shamer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna. Th- th- this film is uh, centered on people too young for me to comment on what they should be doing on how or how they should be living their life. But he's just taking it moment to moment. <laughs> he has a girlfriend. You wake up and those dudigs are in somebody else's mouth. What are you gonna do? <laughs> oh, shout out that guy. He reminded. He's the Amos of this movie. If you've ever seen uh, Chicago. I have seen Chicago. Amos, yes. played by uh, uh, John, John C. C. Riley. Riley. Yes, yeah. I was going to John C. McKinley. Wouldn't have could have worked. Would have been a better movie. <laughs> yeah. He would have just been like, uh, would just been super homophobic to all the characters and been like, "Hey, Dorothy." What are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, positives uh, and negatives of this film. I would say uh, the pacing is fantastic. It Ooh, is. Uh, it keeps you keeps you engaged the entire time. It's also like ninety two minutes or something like that. A real get in, get out, and does its thing, but also it just does everything pretty well in terms of presentation. Uh, it's scary, and I don't like to be scared too much, and this doesn't scare you too much, but given that it's about possession or spiritual possession, you probably should know that going in. I, I just thought it was an excellent lead performance. I'd like to see Wild in more stuff. Uh, what do you have for negatives? Um, it's very, I guess, like the the surface level thing. Like, it's pretty surface level. It's story. Just story isn't great. Yeah, like the, it's, again, like it doesn't reinvent the wheel. It gives you a lot of shit that you've seen in a horror movie before. Even like your description of, yeah, it's just spirits taking over a living person's body. Cool, you've seen that a million times. Doesn't live up to the hand. Yeah. Does not grip you perfectly. Does uh, not grip you the nice right way. I would also say that uh, there's some gross out stuff that I wasn't particularly amazed or like <laughs> thrilled with. Yeah, but, but that's all... that's a taste thing. Like it, I, there are people that will like that stuff, and like it's probably people that love horror movies. But there was some gross out stuff that I could have done with, done without. All right, take me to Letterboxd. Uh, I gave it a three and a half out of five stars. I gave it a three and a half out of five stars too. If I hadn't heard all this stuff about what a world rocking movie it was, I would have gone to this and then ran out and told people like, hey, look, I know horror movies aren't your thing, but this one's pretty good. Right. I, my takeaway would have been like, I don't typically like horror movies, but I really liked this one. And I would probably say it's no barbarian, but correct. Check this out. Yes. Yeah. Well, so if watch this, if you'd like, we would both recommend it fine, but we'd really recommend uh, barbarian and scrubs <laughs> and 
subscribing to our YouTube channel. Sure, do that.